everybody, my name is Tori and this is my channel Tori Moves. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be doing some aerial yoga. Um, just a few comments about safety before we get started. So you definitely don't ever want to practice aerial by yourself. You want to always make sure someone else is around, knows what you're doing. And then <clears throat> you really shouldn't be trying any moves, especially inversions for the first time without someone to spot you or without an instructor present. So this video is really only intended for people who have done aerial before or for other instructors looking to get movements. With that said, um, we're going to have our fabric set up at about our hip bone height. And this is generally what I do for all my aerial yoga classes um, on the beach is have everyone at about hip bone height. And then we're going to open the fabric up. So grab one end, shake it out and have a seat inside. So I gather a few bunches, and this is a little bit on the taller side for me, um, <clears throat> but that's okay. I like it a little bit taller rather than on the shorter side. That's less comfortable. If it's someone's first time, you probably wanna have it a little bit on the shorter side. We'll start in a seated position, uh, closing your eyes if that's comfortable, or you can just gaze out to the horizon if it starts to make you a little bit nauseous or dizzy. We'll start to focus inward on our breathing. So if you're looking out at the horizon, try to just keep your focus. It's something that isn't moving so that way you're not taking a new in visual information and becoming distracted. As you're breathing, start to feel your belly move as you inhale and as you exhale. And connect to your internal sense of grounding. Allowing yourself to feel supported by the fabric and you want to maintain this connection to the breath throughout your practice especially with aerial it can uh, be easy to get excited or nervous and we tend to hold our breath which you don't want because that actually makes it harder to move so maintain this deep full breathing throughout feel like you're breathing into the sides of your rib cage feeling the breath go all the way up into the collarbones and then allow your shoulders to drop down away from your ears. Making space in your mind and in your body for movement. And we'll take a deep breath in to kind of blink our eyes open and return to the moment. Inhale, let's reach our arms up towards the sky, interlacing fingers and press your palms out and away, stretching out through the shoulders and the wrists. And then as you exhale, draw your chin towards your chest, press your hands away from you, rounding through your back, finding a cat back. And then inhale, reach your arms back up towards the sky, looking up. And exhale, round forward, press your hands away, draw your knees in towards your spine. Two more times. Inhale, reach. And exhale, round. And then one more time. Inhale. And exhale. We'll let the hands release down. Slowly stack the spine to find neutral. I'm going to take a twist here. Reach both arms up towards the sky again. I'm going to have you turn to your right and split your arms so you have one hand forward, one hand behind. The arm in front of you is going to grab the fabric in front of your face with a thumbs up type of grip. Your other hand is going to reach behind you to grab the fabric behind you and grab it like you're going to give yourself a pat on the back. Pull and turn behind you, really separating the shoulders, trying to keep your hips anchored. So feel like there's space between your rib cage and your hips and breathe into that space and breathe into the space between the shoulder blades. This should feel like a nice stretch and it should feel like you're able to get really tall through the back of your head. We'll slowly come back to the center here, reaching both arms back up towards the ceiling, the sky, and then twisting to your left, bringing your hand in front of your face with a thumbs up type of grip, then the other hand behind your back, and grab like you're um, giving yourself a pat on the back as you pull and look behind you, breathing in and out through your nose, feeling expand laterally into the sides of your body, lengthening out through the top of your head.
and then slowly come back to center. <clears throat> We're going to take the hands around behind us here. <clears throat> and we'll start to lean back into sit bones for our Navasana or our boat pose. <clears throat> I'm going to push my legs in towards each other and my, the fabric is covering the backs of my legs, but my legs are not dropping into the Lift it up. You're gonna, you can reach your arm, either one arm or both, out to the side. Press your legs into each other. Try and find some stability here. Strengthen through the top of your head. Reach out through your fingers. You can always hold on to the fabric here. Take one more. And then let the legs fall down. Let your arms come to the outside around the fabric. And let your head drop down towards your knees. And then inhale, lift yourself back up. We're going to rock into the pose, reaching your arms up to the side, press into each other. Lengthen them out, arms up to the sky. Breathe. Connect your abdominal muscles. And then slowly lower the legs down. Hook your arms around, let your head drop. And then we'll sit up nice and tall. We're going to grab onto the fabric here and slowly let your feet come down towards the blanket. We're going to stretch here. Reach your arms out to the side. Inhale, look up towards the sky. So ideally, if you don't have anything in the way or anyone in the way, your feet can be hip width apart. And then exhale, reach forward, over, and then down, folding forward. And if it feels uncomfortable to hold on to the fabric, you can always let it go. You can start to rock a little forward and back, getting comfortable trusting the fabric with your weight. And then we'll slowly come back up to stand here, still holding on to the fabric. We're gonna take a little twist here. We're gonna rock a little bit from side to side. So we'll meet back into the center here. <clears throat> We're going to take the fabric up around and in front of you. So it's in front of your hips, uh, right where we first measured it at the beginning of class. I like to come up onto my tippy toes and walk forward until the fabric catches me. So I'm hinging at my hips. The fabric is caught right on my hip bones. And then start to fold forward and reach your hands down towards the mat in front of you. Now your whole palm should be able to be onto the floor and it's not really a big deal if your feet can't touch. Um, initially you might feel more comfortable if your feet are grounded, but though your fabric is holding all of your weight through your hips here. You can start to reach one leg out to the side and then bring it back to center. And then you can bring your other leg out to the side and then back to center, and then maybe reach both legs out to the side. There's very little weight in my hands. I'm not really pushing because if I push through my hands and try to lift out of my hips, I'm creating space for that I could actually slide out of the fabric here, which I don't want. So my hands are really just, there's no weight into them. They're just placeholders. You can wag your tail here from side to side. And then we'll meet back into the center. Just let your legs drop. You can hug your knees, uh, preparing us for the next pose, if you feel comfortable with that. And then we'll slowly bring the hands back down towards the mat. Walk the feet forward and walk ourselves back to stand. So that was our first version. Um, pretty low risk. The next move is going to be our first trick of class. And this one, especially if you've never done it before, you might want someone to spot you the first time. Around. I don't recommend trying this by yourself for the first time at home without anyone to watch you or help you. Um, but this is a forward roll or a somersault. I'm going to give an option to come back um, after you've rolled forward. So 
You'll have your fabric at the front of your hips. You're going to place your hands down, walk yourself back. Bring one hand up to grab on with my thumbs up, my pinkies in, my thumbs out to the sides. I'm going to curl my knees in towards my nose, round through my back. So this is really important. A lot of people try to pull with a and you're really just fighting yourself. So really curl through your spine, round through your back, and then pull yourself up over and down. And you should land very gently. That means you have control through your arms. If you're kind of plopping down, I would try that one a couple more times before you try going otherwise, the other way is a lot harder. So I'm holding onto the fabric here. My arms are pretty much mostly extended. Now, when I first started learning this, I would have one foot on the floor, and then I'd kind of kick up and catch with my other leg to pull myself through. Now that I have a little bit more upper body and core strength, I can kind of pull myself over in more of one motion without all those choppy pieces in between. So you'll take a deep breath, pull your shoulder blades down and back, and then slowly pull myself over. I still have a little bit of a kick, and I land with the fabric on my hip bones just like for my down dog. Now, from here, you can first stop your swinging, that's helpful, and then keep your feet anchored down. Start to lift through your upper back and chest first. Try and keep your legs low like you have heavy boots on, and then you can start to reach your arms out to the sides. Now, um, it's definitely a lot easier to balance with your feet a little bit separated, so if you want to challenge yourself, you can pull the heels together and really lengthen out through the top of your head, pressing through your sit bones like you're flying. And then we'll slowly lower back down. I'm gonna walk my feet forward and then slowly come up to stand here. I'm gonna grab my fabric about shoulder distance apart. Make sure my hands aren't turning in, but I'm keeping them level. They so press out and just reach a little bit side to side. Make sure you have equal length on the left and right side of your body. We'll come back to the center here and then stand up nice and tall. So before we do our next round of tricks, we're gonna go into some leg stretches. So I have my fabric out in front of me and I'm gonna take my left leg inside the fabric first. So I have it around my ankle. Your hands can be on your hips. They can be holding onto the fabric, really whatever's comfortable for you. And then I'm gonna reach my leg, sweep it from side to side. Maybe if you have handles, you want to hold on to those so they're not swinging around and hitting in the face. And then come back to the center here. Your foot, grab onto the fabric. It'll start to fold forward over and down. more times, feeling every inhale lengthen up through the top of your head and every exhale help you fold deeper in towards the leg. And we'll stand up nice and tall. I'm going to grab on with my right hand. You can grab onto either side of the fabric and then reach my left arm behind me, stretching out from side to side, letting my hip drop down through my the and push the floor away from me. To the center here, I'm going to take my left heel and grab onto the fabric and pivot my standing foot. So pivot heel toe, heel toe, reach out to the side, and then reach my arm up over to grab onto the fabric. So you may or may not reach. And something fun to do if both hands do touch, you can kind of pull with your underneath hand and push with your top hand, looking underneath your top arm to get more of a side body stretch. And you want to make sure you're not leaning out into the fabric. That puts a lot of pressure on the inside of your knee. You want to keep your, your hip over your heel so the bend is just at the side of your body. And then we'll stand up nice and tall. Now to switch to the other side, I'm going to grab onto the fabric. I'm going to lean back a little bit. And then as I sweep forward, bring one leg in and the other leg out. So that's how I switch sides. If 
you're not feeling that, um, it's a little bit, it's a little bit risky. Uh, you can just step one leg out and step the other leg in. Now we're going to go into those leg sweeps on this side, letting one leg swing from side to side, letting go through that hip, making sure both of your shoulders are even, reconnecting with your breath and feeling really grounded and tall through your standing leg. And we'll come back to the center here, flexing through the foot. Fold forward and down. Lengthen the top of your head. And with every exhale, fold yourself a little bit deeper, a little bit closer on the leg. Let your hip drop and your spine length. One more deep breath. And we'll stand up nice and tall here. I'm going to take my left hand and grab onto the fabric and pull my right arm back and behind me, reaching from arm to arm, dropping my hip down, breathing into the space in my upper back, breathing out through the top of my head, pressing my foot away from me. And slowly come back to center. I'm going to pivot this standing foot. Grab on with the same side as the leg, the fabric. And then reach the other arm up and over. And I like to pull and push. Pull with your bottom hand and push through your top. Looking underneath your arm up towards the sky. And slowly come back up to stand here. Hop back to center. And if you want to take that swing on this side just to be even, go for it. Press down. Swing the leg in. Step your foot out. And then I'm actually just going to step this foot out as well. <laughs> so next we're going to go into our basic inversion, which is the usually the most advanced pose that I teach for a beginner aerial class. Now this is definitely not something you want to try for your for the first time. By yourself without someone to spot you. Um, a lot of people make certain common mistakes all the time and they can be really dangerous because you can fall on your head. So watch but please don't practice this unless you have an instructor to guide you or someone to spot you. You're gonna have your fabric um, behind your hips. <clears throat> my thumbs are hooked at the sides like belt loops. I'm gonna kind of go up onto my tippy toes just to make sure let me just actually move this to the front of my body. Okay, take a deep breath in. And then as you exhale, slowly start to lean back into the fabric. I'm pushing my hands away to help bring my knees up to the outside of the fabric. And I'm here, I'm curled up. This is abdominal strength. I'm going to keep tipping back. My legs catch on um, the fabric here in front. And then my legs hook around to the outside. So what I see happen a lot is people's legs come through the middle and you that can end up one of two ways you can end up doing a backflip or you can end up falling on your head so that's where it gets potentially a little bit dangerous from here you can start to take your leg out to the side and then reach it behind you grabbing on with one hand or with two We'll go ahead and repeat on the other side. So hooking this leg back around in front. Take your leg out to the side, around, and behind you. And if you start to feel nauseous or dizzy or lightheaded when you're upside down, that's a sign from your body that you maybe need to come back upright. So in order to come out of this, you're going to walk your hands up inside of your knees, unhook your feet, very slowly tip yourself back up, let your feet come down, 
And I always like to lean back into the fabric. You can rest your hands in front of you and let your forehead rest against your hands. Taking a deep breath or two. You always want to be gentle when going from upside down to right side up, especially if you're still relatively new to aerial, your body has to get used to those adjustments. And then eventually you can work towards being more dynamic. Okay, we'll come back to stand and I can face you as you face me. We're going to do a couple of things standing inside the fabric now. So you're going to take your fabric to be a band. Um, if it's open too much, your toes tend to get caught. And if it's a band, sometimes it can be uncomfortable on the bottoms of your feet, but that's actually good for you. It helps open up the connective tissue if your feet are tight. So you're welcome. Double bonus. Not very comfortable. We're going to take the left foot and place it inside the fabric. And then reach your hands up nice and tall. So the trick to your fabric not swinging a lot when you're inside of it is pull your heel towards your butt, push straight down into the fabric, and then stand straight up nice and tall. So here I am. I have um, one foot in. Now there's a variety of ways you can do tree pose. I like to bring the leg around and then in front and just place it on the calf. And then from here, I'll have my, my one side hooked and then I can go into just prayer hands so I have one elbow hooked around the fabric and one elbow in front of it. If this doesn't feel secure for you then don't feel like you have to be here. And then try to find something that isn't moving that's eye level to help you keep your balance. Okay. And we're going to take our hands back to our fabric here and take the leg around inside. So I'm going to hold on about shoulder rib cage height, have my foot up by my knee. And then I'm just going to take a little lean back here and then stand up nice and tall. Now, if you want to go a little bit further, you can walk your hands down. Now, this again is in the category of things that you don't want to try for the first time at home by yourself without someone to spot you. Uh, <clears throat> take a deep breath and you can start to lean back here. You really have to drive your knee in towards your chest if you want to kind of pause in the middle. And then if you want to flip all the way over and around, you really have to drive your knee more and more and more into your chest and you'll make yourself your way all the way around. Um, if you weren't quite into back flipping, just step yourself down and we're going to go to the other side. So you have your right foot inside the fabric here going to reach your hands up, take a deep breath, press down, stand up nice and tall. We're going into our tree pose, we're crossing up first, so your leg can go around and behind, and then in front, and then you can find some balance here. And it's pretty normal for one side to feel a lot more stable than the other, so if you don't feel comfortable doing prayer hands on one side or the other, don't do it. It's your practice, it's your body, it's your life. Make it what you want it to be. We'll go ahead and take the hands back around to the fabric. We'll take our foot by our knee and we'll take our hands about like shoulder, rib cage height, somewhere up there. We're just gonna practice the lean back, pressing into the fabric, getting comfortable going upside down without feeling like we're falling. All right, we have that there's a natural human fear and instinct that anytime we lean backwards, we kind of freak out a little bit because that's generally pretty dangerous. So you're, you're really having to override a fear response inside your brain that's very primitive and very important. So be patient with yourself, give yourself time, take a deep breath. We'll start to lean back here. Remember, honor yourself and where you're at. So you can just pause or you can give yourself a little and over and down. I kind of cheated there a little bit and pushed on the fabric. <laughs> we'll take our fabric around in front of us here and just find some stretches out to the sides. I'm 
and then we'll slowly bring ourselves back up nice and tall. So we're going to take some nice uh, juicy stretches. Normally I do these in the, the beginning, but I think it's also good to open up at the begin, up at the end. We'll have our fabric around behind us. I'm going to walk it back a little bit. Have your feet planted down in front of you. Take your hands up around and then clasp your hands behind your head and find a little bit of opening deep breath. And then exhale, kind of round through your back. Try and keep your hips neutral. Keep your hips lengthening, dropping down, your toes spread. And just move through your upper back. Inhale, open, extend. It should feel like a good stretch across the front of the body. Exhale, round. And then find a neutral spine here. Let your elbow come towards your hip. And then up and over to the other side. Really rooting into both feet equally. If you find yourself kind of like one leg is floating up or you're losing your balance, you're probably not pressing equally into both sides. Finishing up your last side here. We'll take our arms and extend them out overhead, pointing out through your index fingers, finding a back bend here. And then lift back up nice and tall. And walk ourselves forward. Okay, so the fabric may get up into your armpits. If that happens, just kind of pull it down. You want it to be across the back of your ribs. We're going to take the right leg, reach it out in front of you, flex through the foot, try and have your hips level, and cross your ankle over your knee and find a stretch here. This is one of my favorite stretches. You can kind of feel the space between your ribs and your hips opening up and dropping down. And then we'll release this foot back out nice and long. And we'll step the foot down and go to the other side, reach the leg out, cross your ankle over, drop the knee down, and then breathe here. We'll slowly reach our leg back out in front of us and then step it back down onto the mat. We're going to walk our feet out wide to the side here and you can sweep a little bit from one side to the other. Um, if you're feeling it, you can start to circle around with your hips. And you can start to circle the other direction, just really loosening everything up. Find the balance between holding on and letting go. And then we'll come back to the center here, walk the feet back together, reach your arms up, and then pull and stand up nice and tall. Okay, now we're going to make it towards the best part of class, our aerial shavasana. So we'll shake this fabric out. We're going to gather up a few bunches of the fabric. <clears throat> and then you'll take a little hop and scoot it underneath yourself. We're going to be reclining all the way back here. So you'll reach the fabric out, you'll dig your heels in, and just, there should be an that you can be completely covered. So <clears throat> we'll reach our arms long overhead. I'm going to just take a couple of side bends here over to one side and then the other. Come back to the center. Your hands can stay reaching out of the fabric overhead. I have to cross my arms over my chest make like a little X position. Whatever works for you. The fabric does have a tendency to kind of push your shoulders in towards each other. Allowing any deep breathing to become more slow, more relaxed. And you experience the sensation. 
trying to find that feeling in your mind. Like you're floating on a calm pond. And while wow, there's a lot going on underneath the surface, I mean, you'll never fully turn off your brain. There's always thoughts around. So trying to just find the stillness and the calm, not feeling like you have to dive deep with any of those thoughts, but just allow yourself to remain present and calm on the surface thing. to be nothing else that you need to be doing. When you feel ready, start to deep. 
trying the prana the body. Overhead, wiggling toes, reaching your hands up and slowly feet of the fabric. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down so I know not to make a video like this again. If you haven't subscribed, I make new videos every week. And um, thanks for watching. See you again soon.